All right, Shalom. First off, give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Makar Kadash. Deb honor to the apostles and elders of the GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring, and truth and sincerity in the women and children who follow. So I wanted to speak on judgment because, you know, it's a stigma out there that's, you know, still going around by um, a lot of people just in, in general, whether, you know, they at the workplace or uh, in the churches. It's just it's this um this stigma, this this doctrine out there that nobody can judge me. Only God can judge me this. Um so nobody needs to judge nobody. And really, you know, I just I, I just I, I gotta address it man, you know. Um I was at work the other night, you know, and we were talking we had a conversation and, you know, it just, everything started going less. And, you know, scripture started coming out. You know, I had to, to grab the sword. It just, it got real ugly. But uh make a long story short, um, you know, the, the Edomite, he was talking about, he had this, uh, he said that he lived by the principle that there's only one truth, that everything is an opinion and nothing is actually true. I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I ever fucking heard. You know what I mean? It's true that I have brown eyes. That's true. You know, it's true that I have a daughter named, you know, I'm not going to say my daughter's name, but I have a daughter. That's true. I'm wearing a white shirt. That's true. You know what I mean? And then, you know, to go uh, even deeper, you know what I'm saying? The Most High and Yahweh Shemashaya, uh, the Bible, this, that, and the third. He's, and his, like, in his doctrine is basically everything is an opinion. It's an opinion that I have brown eyes. Somebody else might say that they're not brown. Well, you can clearly see that I have brown eyes. Well, I have a white shirt on. Well, somebody might say that that's not, a, or that shirt's not white. That's just, that's confusion. That's really what it is at the end of the day. It's confusion. And, you know, of course, he doesn't believe in the Most High, which is not for him anyways, but that's, that's the spirit of Esau, you know? He always tries to bring confusion. And then you actually have, you know, these niggas in the churches that backed, that, that was backing him, you know? So you had this lady in the church, or she's a, a so-called church-going individual, and she was agreeing with what he said. I'm like, how are you agreeing with this dude? He don't even believe in God. You you saw, you saw call yourself believing in God, but you're agreeing with him. You don't believe in God. So then somehow we got on judgment and, you know, she tried to use um, basically the story with uh, with the Lord. I'm going to get it here in a second. Uh, with, I, I believe it was Mary Magdalene when uh, they said to, to cast the first stone or whatnot. But uh, we're going we gonna to get that here in a second. I want to get this, this scripture right here first. It says, but the uh, first Corinthians 2 and 14, starting at 14, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. Okay, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's what that Edomite was going through, okay? The the Spirit of the Most High is foolishness to him. You know, just believing in, in something that you never seen is foolishness unto him. All right? Re reading the scriptures is foolishness unto him. To him, it's just an opinion written on a page, and that no one can ever have the truth. No one can ever know what that person meant when he wrote it down. Yeah, because they made it down re uh, meaning one thing. It doesn't. He didn't write it down and say, "Oh, it can mean this or it can mean that." You know, ha 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 ha. You know, no. The scriptures have meaning. All right, how do you get those meanings? You have to go into the words in which they were written in, in the Greek and the Hebrew, okay? So, there is, and then also the Lord has to be working with you. It's not for everybody, but the elect will get the 100% truth, okay? So, it says, um, they're foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, all right? That's why he can't get it, because he doesn't have the spirit to get it, all right? They're spiritually discerned, okay? He says, but he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Why is that? 
Why is it number one? That's a person that's judging right there. All right, the spiritual man can judge all things. How is that? Why is it? Let's read on. It says, "For who has known the mind of the Lord that He may instruct him?" But we have the mind of uh, we have the mind of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Okay, because <coughs> He said He comes in the volume of the book. And if we read this book in, and if we're judging ourselves by the by the law, and we're upholding the law, then I can tell you what you're doing wrong according to the law. If I wear my beard and I see that you're shaving your beard, I can say, "Hey, you're not supposed to shave your beard." If I'm eating, if I'm not eating pork, and I know it says in the law that you're not supposed to eat pork, I can tell you, "Hey, look, you're not supposed to eat pork." That's judging. Okay, you judge everything. You judge your shoes. You judge your clothes. You judge the friends that you hang out with. All right, all those are judging. So I don't know how you can say only God can judge me, because you judge everything in every situation. If you want to do a lane change, that's a judgment call. Okay, so we're gonna get the 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 story in Matthew real quick, and I want to get uh one other precept at least before I uh, close this out. Let me see. It's not in Matthew either. It's in John, I believe. Y'all bear with me. This this phone freeze. All right, slack here. So uh, this is John, chapter eight, and we'll start at verse one. Yahweh Shai went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him and sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set, set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, uh, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So they called her sleeping with another man. Okay, it says, uh, it says Now Moses in the law commanded us uh, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? So they said this tempting him that they might ha have to accuse him. So basically they're like, okay, the law of Moses said the law of Moses said that we should stone this lady. But you being you who you are, I'm saying what you gonna say? They're trying to catch him up. So like, oh well, he's not obeying the law of Moses, so we can get him too. Like two birds with one stone kind of deal. All right. So continuing in verse six, it says, but Yahweh Shai stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up and said unto them, uh, He that is without sin, sin among you, let him cast off, cast the first stone. He said, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted of their own conscience, when they saw one, one by one, uh, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, uh, and Yahweh Shai was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. All right, it says, and, and when Yahweh Shai lifted up, he saw none but the woman, and said unto her, "Woman, there are those. Or where are those? Thine, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee?" And she said, "No man, Lord." And Yahweh Shai said unto her, "Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more." Okay. So what she's saying is basically nobody can judge because um, because Yahweh Shai didn't basically stone her for committing adultery. But that's not what happened. What did he say? He said, go, go again and sin no more. <coughs> basically, Yahweh Shai is that, that sacrificial lamb. He's the <coughs> the reason why we don't have to you know, sacrifice doves and pigeons and all of that because the Lord may sacrifice for us. That doesn't mean we don't get to judge or we, that no one should be judged for any reason. All he's saying is he is the blood now. So we don't have to do blood sacrifices because he is the blood. Because he is the blood, you know, we can repent and have repentance. And then it said, sin no more again. Because it's because I uh, what is that a uh, Hebrews? 
Give me a second, Bible Kasha. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, this is a Hebrew 6 and 6. It says, If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of the Most High, afresh, and put him to an open shame. So, what he's saying, if you, um, if you repent and you go back to doing that same thing, then you're asking Yahweh Shai to basically get crucified for you again. You're crucifying them fresh, okay? And putting them to open shame. It's a shame that you're doing that, man. That's why he said sin no more again. All right, so the the picture should be getting clearer for, for you brothers out there. I know that uh, you probably already know this, but there's a lot of people that don't. So that's why we're going over it. Um, This is one more scripture that I did want to get. And uh, we can shut it down after that. Uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, f um, uh, bear with me. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to start at uh, verse 1. It says, Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Who are the saints? The saints are the Lord's chosen people. Okay, The saints are the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, specifically the ones who are set up to to judge Okay, the elect. Okay? He says, do you, need, do, you, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Or know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Okay? It says, If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Okay? That's plain, man. All right? It says that, that you're going to judge the world, the saints going to judge the world, that you can even judge angels, all right, and tell angels and command angels what to do, all right, so, cut, you know, and that's, that's really all I wanted to say, um, I hope you got the point, I hope you brothers were edified by this video, you know, I'm going to give all praise, that's called law, to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem, Rekar Kadash, that bonus to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honesty of the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity and women who follow. Shalom.